Seydege, Bala Morgulis. Bala Morgulis. Lemons symbolize the human heart, light, and love. They are shown for purity, cleanliness, innocence, fighting negative energy, and keeping one's space safe. They are associated with optimism and happiness. Lemons are used to heal the sick and clear away illness and negativity from the body and aura. Keeping lemons in your home will absorb bad energy, and most notably for us, Growing a lemon tree outside of your house will prevent any harm and negative energies from ever entering your home. We see a few of our most important characters within A Song of Ice and Fire associated with lemons in varying degrees. Today we will be examining the meaning of lemons to these characters based on what we can learn of lemon symbolism. We will also uncover a lot of symbolism which ties these characters into the triple goddess motif. This actually turned out to be a pretty detailed analysis once we got it written out, so we do plan to split it up between our three lemon ladies and bring you three lemon recipes to summon a dream of spring. Today we will be making a highly requested recipe and Sansa's favorite, lemon cakes. Let's get tarted. You must be very hungry. Shall we have a bite of boar together and some lemon cakes? Lemon cakes are my favorite. So we've been told. That Varus creature seems to think we should be grateful for the information. We see Sansa associated with lemons in the form of her very favorite treat, lemon cakes. This treat is heavily used early in the story to really drive home the innocent mind frame of Sansa. They are mentioned five times in Sansa's first three chapters in A Game of Thrones. Sansa, I think we can all agree, is a perfect example for us in the story of purity and fits the maiden mold perfectly. She believes life will be like the song and dance she envisions of royal court, but her reality is shaken by the fact that nothing is how the songs make it out to be. Sansa has a very difficult experience leaving Winterfell. Her father is accused of being a traitor and beheaded, and Sansa was taken as a ward of the crown. She was not treated gently or kindly, and her emotions were manipulated to make her a pawn in the Game of Thrones. She was forced to marry Tyrion Lannister, though their marriage was not consummated. She had protectors in the form of Sandor Clegane, the Hound, Sir Dantos, her Florian, and Peter Baelish, Littlefinger, in his own way. Even Tyrion was a protector for her in some regards. With him for a husband, he protected her from Joffrey's abuse and harassment, and likely from other players treating her as a pawn for a marriage pact or something equally devious. Tyrion treated her with respect and empathy. When the Tyrells come into the picture, they attempt to arrange a marriage between their heir, Willis, and Sansa, and spirit her away to Highgarden. At this point, we see a resurgence of the use of lemon cakes in Sansa's story, being served to her during the luncheon with Lady Olenna and Marjorie, and during the sewing circles and gossiping with Marjorie and her cousins. Sansa greatly desires to go to High Garden, where she thinks she will find the splendors of how she imagined royal court life to be, singers, maidens, chivalrous knights, and most importantly, lemon cakes. The cousins took Sansa into their company as if they had known her all their lives. They spent long afternoons doing needlework and talking over lemon cakes and honeyed wine, played at tiles of an evening, sang together in the castle sept. This plan is eventually thwarted and the Lannisters arrange for Sansa to marry Tyrion instead, securing their claim on the north once Robb Stark is defeated. Sansa continues to secretly meet Ser Dantos. Rob is eventually killed, as is Joffrey, at his wedding to Marjorie. Sansa and Tyrion are the prime suspects, but she slips away just prior to Joffrey's death, and Tyrion takes the blame. 
Sansa escapes King's Landing with the help of Sir Dantos and heads to the Vale with Littlefinger to stay with her Aunt Lysa and her cousin Robert Aaron, Sweet Robin. Peter and Lysa marry immediately, and the new Baelish family certainly have a dynamic of their own. Sansa poses as Peter's bastard daughter, Elaine Stone, and colors her hair brown, though it's clear that Littlefinger has growing feelings towards Sansa. This causes serious tension for Lysa, who threatens to throw Sansa out the moon door. Peter saves Sansa and throws Lysa out the moon door instead. Peter then basically takes over the Eyrie and the Veil with lies and manipulation, all while Sansa is watching and learning. He teaches her his tricks and his code he works by. While these things are prime examples of the transition of how Sansa sees the world, she is learning that truth and honor do not come into play in the Game of Thrones. She learned that lesson the day that Ned was killed, and Peter teaches her the same lesson many times over, to climb the chaos ladder to the top. Lemon cakes prove to be the perfect representation of childhood innocence for Sansa. They are a taste of the good life, what is comfortable and luxury before her troubles started. They are the embodiment of a summer child treat and Sansa in her former life, innocent, pure happiness. They are a comfort food she longs for and as our story goes on, they become more rare for her but also are an anchor for her to remember who Sansa Stark was. Sansa has a pre-release chapter from The Winds of Winter, which takes place in the Vale. There is some serious manipulations going on, and a huge tournament is being held at the Gates of the Moon at the Vale. Sweet Robin is honoring eight of the winners with a place in his Brotherhood of Winged Knights. Eight, because King Tommen only has seven Kingsguard. Littlefinger is working at creating a marriage pact for Elaine with Sir Harold Harding, known as Harry the Heir. Harry is the only living nephew of John Arryn, making him Sweet Robin's heir and heir to the Vale should anything befall Sweet Robin. He was raised as a ward of the Wainwoods at Iron Oaks and is known for being a handsome, strong knight with a resemblance to a young John Arryn. Harry is a hot ticket item with many highborn ladies vying for his attention. He has fathered a bastard on a lowborn girl and has another on the way with a merchant's daughter. Sansa hears stories of how handsome he is from a few sources, and in true Sansa fashion, she envisions a gallant, true knight. But when the time comes to meet him, he acts like a schmuck and remarks on Elaine's bastard status from the start which again breaks down the true knight trope Sansa has in her mind. Interestingly enough, at the great feast they have that night, there's a giant lemon cake in the shape of the giant's lance, the largest mountain in the Vale. And best of all, Lord Nestor's cooks prepared a splendid subtlety, a lemon cake in the shape of a giant's lance, 12 feet tall and adorned with an eerie made of sugar for me, Elaine thought as they wheeled it out. Sweet Robin loved lemon cakes too, but only after she told him that they were her favorites. The cake had required every lemon in the veil, but Peter had promised that he would send to Dorne for more. What could the significance of this lemon cake be? Could it be an omen? We are repeatedly told through Sansa's chapters how bastards are looked down on or less than. Sansa has to adjust to this quickly while posing as Elaine, but it also gave her perspective on how she has treated John all these years. Harry the heir uses it to offend her in their first meeting. There are layers of deception going on in the Eyrie, trying to arrange both Sansa and Harry to be in a position to inherit both the Vale and potentially Winterfell without it being blatantly spoken. This would require Sweet Robin to bite the dust and for Sansa to ultimately inherit Winterfell. Littlefinger is rolling with the punches and riding Sansa's coattails to get himself in a good position for the future. Maybe he's holding out to get Sansa herself in the long game once she's the Lady of the Vale and of Winterfell. The giant lemon cake is a blatant clue that Elaine is actually Sansa in plain sight. It's her favorite luxury on a large scale a representation of innocence, purity, and protection. 
We saw Sansa absorb Jane Poole's character in the show, and Sansa was the one who had to marry Ramsay Bolton. What if Harry embodies some of those characteristics of Ramsay, and Sansa is about to suffer at his hands? It seems a bit out of character from what we know of Harry thus far. He seems more of a cocky womanizer than a violent brute that we all know and loved Ramsay to be. He is used to getting his way sexually, though, and has a bastard daughter and another on the way. Will this come into play? Does he assume that bastards are easy and think Elaine's honor is out of the question? What will happen after this lemon cake is eaten and the symbol of purity is out of the forefront? I actually foresee the opposite and will continue on Sansa's virginal voyage through suitors. She was able to escape consummating her marriage to Tyrion and has had close calls of rape with the mob in King's Landing, Marillion's attempt, and Joffrey's imprisonment, threats, and abuse. Even the Hound has had the opportunity. What if something happens to Harry the heir in the upcoming tournament that leaves Sansa the virtuous lady we know and love? Either way, I view the giant lemon cake as a symbol of Sansa's virginal virtue, a pristine juxtaposition of a lemon on a mountaintop. The Eyrie is notoriously fickle for letting things take root, as we've learned with many attempts to plant a weirwood in the rocky soil of the Vale. I don't think the plans Peter thinks he has for Sansa will flourish. Sansa has begun to recognize that she is once again becoming a pawn for Littlefinger's games, and I really hope we will see Dark Sansa come forth in the winds of winter to take charge of her future.
thanks so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next in our series on the Lemon Ladies of Ice and Fire. The long night is upon us, and we wish you good fortune in the wars to come. Valor Regulus.